Remember those sun hats we all had as kids? You would just unfold them, flip them open, and they turned into this big sun hat. You could use one right now, actually, because that's not what this is. This is an herb drying rack, and it works on the same principle, at least in theory. I opened it the other day. It comes in this neat little pouch, which is one of the reasons that I got it. I thought it would be easy to store. And um, I got it out of the pouch just to see how it worked so I could demonstrate it for you easily. And I have to say that after 45 minutes of wrestling with it, I was on my hands and knees twisting it and turning it. And I will spare you those <laughs> scenes. But uh, uh, at least for the eight tier herb uh, dryer, um, hanging herb track, uh, hanging herb dryer rack. It's impossible to, to, to get it back into the case, just so you know, that's, that's the first thing. Uh, otherwise, we're going to try it out today. Whoop! Here is the beast, and I thought we would just hang it up right here. One of the things that I do like about it is this Velcro loop at the top. Otherwise, you would need an S-hook. I mean, you might want to use one anyway, but you don't actually need one. Uh, as you can see, we're going to be able to hang this right on the branch. And there we go. That's all there is to it. The other thing I looked for in a drying rack was this zipper opening on it because uh, some of them are just open, which means that if it blows around in the wind, everything just flies out. So you really want something that closes. And it's not always easy to see on the photos. So I would advise you to double check when you're ordering one. I got mine on Amazon here in France. You can find them on Amazon anywhere. Eight tier can certainly seem like a lot, but I won't be drying just herbs. One of the reasons that uh, I wanted the larger model is because I also want to dry linden leaves or lime tree leaves. Everyone knows about linden flowers. I'm sure you've heard it if you're not from Europe. It's one of the Europeans' favorite tisans, favorite herbal teas. Normally, you would uh, take the flowers and these bits and dry them, but we're already too late in the year. What I want to get are the leaves, because the leaves are edible. If you pick young leaves, you can use them for a salad. You just toss them into a regular salad. They don't have a lot of taste. I'm not wild, wild about them. However, they are a little bit mucilaginous. So you can use them to thicken the soups and you can also use them dried as flour, which is actually what I intend to do. I did it during the war when they were short on flour. They would compensate by using the leaves of linden trees, which are abundant here in the south of France and elsewhere. So I'm starting from the bottom up and I'm leaving the branches here to give them a little bit of weight, to make it a little bit more substantial because I can already see that it's blowing around, which is something I read in other reviews. Shake off any excess water from the fountain. I've left some of these on. Close this up. Now for some herbs and foraging right around the house with the nifty little foraging basket that I found at the, at the Ville de Grenier. Got some sage here. Picked up a small plant when uh, we got here. It doesn't look great, great, but I love sage and can never get enough of it. It's really hard to find in Paris. It's bizarre. 
Now for some rosemary. I'm taking it from the back so that it doesn't show from the house. I won't be taking lavender here because it's just too pretty. And, uh, and there's plenty of wild lavender in the hills which we'll go collect afterward. Truth be told, I've never had a whole lot of luck drying rosemary. And I'm really hoping that our new gadget will uh, make this whole process a whole lot easier and won't end up with just a massive black rosemary. Let's see, I think I have enough room to put the sage there as well. Now it's off to the hills for some wild lavender and wild thyme. Should have done that early in the morning before it got so hot. Fortunately, I found a shady spot with both lavender and thyme, so I'll only be taking a few flowers and a few branches from each plant so as to ensure the continuity of biodiversity. Can you see this pair of black kites ascending? Not, not man-made kites, but the hawks. So beautiful. So the very last thing I'm putting in here is some of the black garlic that we made in the machine uh, that I just did a review on. I'm putting it in the bottom, the very bottom. I moved some of the, uh, some of the leaves up. They're already starting to curl, you can see. Um, but I'm putting this garlic in here. Ouch, it's so hot. Uh, to cure for a few days, as indicated in the package on the machine. And I'm putting them on the bottom so that it will weigh it down in case it gets windy. But so far it hasn't been blowing nearly as much as I thought it would. Maybe because I did leave the stems on a lot of things. I did notice that it doesn't hang quite as straight as I might have expected. I think maybe the zippers are responsible for that. Oop, I see an ant trying to get in, but it can't. Okay, so there we go. Shall we check back in a couple of days? So it was three days ago that we put our herbs and leaves in here to dry and the uh, black garlic in the very bottom to cure and kind of hold it secure. Uh, it's been hot and dry, uh, sunny. Today it's kind of muggy, it's starting to get overcast. I think there's a storm in the air, a thunderstorm in the air. Uh, shall we see how everything is done? Starting at the top and working our way down. The thyme is quite dry, but it was pretty dry to start. It's, uh, I picked it a little late in the season, and uh, it's actually <laughs> pretty sun-dried on its own, but uh, now we're sure it's dry. The lavender, yes, seems quite dry. I think we're going to be able to just put that uh, away. Let's see down here where we have the sage and rosemary. Sage is a little bit soft, most of it, but then the leaves are, maybe if I had taken it off the stems, you know? Same with the rosemary. So I will give these a couple more days in the future. I think I would take the leaves off things like rosemary and sage where the leaves are a little bit thicker. Speaking of leaves, let's go down to check out our linden tree, our lime tree leaves that we're going to use to make to thicken soups and to make a little bit of flour. Oh, okay, now these are really dry and crispy. Great. Okay, I'm all, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take those out, crunch them all up in a plastic bag, and uh, when I get home I'll pulverize them in the food processor to use in soups and uh, as extra flour. And down at the bottom we have the garlic. 
Okay, so normally with black garlic, it needs to cure for five to 10 days, they say, uh, at room temperature. It's actually been a little more than room temperature because it is hot and dry out here. I think I'll probably leave those for another couple of days. That'll make five days outside and uh, we should be good. So, all in all, I can say I am really happy with this hanging herb dryer rack. Um, the only thing that I would say falls short of its promises uh, is that uh, at least for the eight tier model that I have, it's impossible to fold it back up and fit it in that neat little pouch as was advertised. Uh, it may work for the four to six layer, tier, the, the tiered uh, models, but uh, I can't speak for that. Uh, that's the only drawback. Otherwise, I love it. I think I'll get a lot of use for it. And uh, I'm, of course, not in Paris where there's no, <laughs> there's no outdoor space, but uh, down here I certainly will. And if you have the space and the uh, and the herbs for it, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, if you learned anything from this video, 